How to organize your notes in OneNote for Windows 10. I had previously made a video about organizing notes in OneNote using the desktop version of the application, and I thought I'd make an updated video using the Windows 10 version this time. First, I'm going to give you an overview of the OneNote's uh, notes hierarchy. Second, I'll show you how to actually set it up and customize it. And finally, I'll share some examples of how I organize my own notes. Now, this video is going to be longer than usual, so please use the timestamp below and skip around if you like. One of the things that I like most about OneNote is its simple structure. It's set up like a physical notebook with multiple sections. So at the top level, we have the actual notebook. You start with your first notebook, but you can have as many notebooks as you need. So if you click on this button, you see that I have three notebooks. Maybe you have a notebook for work and a notebook for home, or you might have a notebook for each of the different projects that you manage. Let's click on one of the notebooks here. At the second level, we have sections. You can use the sections to categorize your notes. In this example, since this notebook is for a specific project, I have a section for each of the key project areas that I need to manage. You might organize your notes by business functions like operations, marketing, and finance. Or if you're a student, you might organize your notes by subjects that you're studying like math, science, and history. And at the last level are the pages. This is where your actual note pages reside. So if I click on the communication section, you see that there are two note pages. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can create a new notebook, set up sections, and add note pages. When you launch OneNote for the first time, it creates a new notebook for you. If you right-click on it, you have a few options. For example, you can give the notebook a nickname and change its color. By the way, if you don't see this navigation pane, you can click on this navigation button to expand the panel. If you already have existing notebooks, you can switch over to them by hitting the down arrow. All your active notebooks will be listed here. If you want to open a notebook that is not active, meaning they had previously been closed, then you can click on More Notebooks and navigate to it. And lastly, if you want to create a brand new notebook, you can click on the plus sign to add. You can create a new section by clicking on Add Section and giving it a name. And for each section, you have these options in the context menu. You can delete. You'll get a message to confirm. The section is not permanently deleted right away. If you want to view all your deleted sections and pages, you can go to the View tab and click on Deleted Notes. You can see the section we just deleted here. We can right-click to delete it permanently or restore it to anywhere in our active notebooks. I'm going to restore it to our original notebook. and you can see that the section has been restored. Going back to the context menu, we can rename the section. This is straightforward. Move or copy, not just within this notebook, but to other notebooks as well, as you can see. Let's choose the Project A notebook. Now if we head over to the Project A notebook, you can see the project document section here. Changing the section color is straightforward. Copy link to section. The URL to the section will be copied to the clipboard. You can paste this link in another section of the current notebook. For example, And if I click on it, it'll take me to the section. 
And you can even paste a link in a web browser. And this section will appear here. Going back to our Windows application, you can pin section to start. If this is a frequently used section, you can pin it to appear in the start tile. So let's do this. If you click on start, and if you go to your tiles, go all the way to the bottom, you see that the risk section has been added to the tile and it brings us here. And lastly, password protect the section. So let's say this is a shared notebook on the network and you want to maintain a private section just for you, you can password protect it. Now, if you try to go into it, well, let's lock it first. Now you have to enter a password to access the section. If you want to group related sections together, you can create a section group. Right click on any blank space in the section panel and select new section group. We can name it. And now you can right mouse click on any of the sections, move copy, and bring it down to the project documents section group and you can see it listed here or you can just click on a section and drag it down. Let's try that again. Now that these two sections are nested under the project document section group and we could collapse this and expand it for better organization. Within each section, you can create note pages by clicking on the add page label at the bottom here. Let's explore the context menu for pages now. Delete, rename, cut, copy, and paste are straightforward, so I'll skip over them. We can move or copy our selected page to other sections or even to other notebooks. And this, of course, is very similar to moving and copying sections as we saw earlier. Making a subpage is a useful feature to help us organize and group similar notes, uh, note pages together. To illustrate this, I'm going to go over to our scope section. As you can see, I have two pages here. I'm going to add another new page. And let's pretend that this is a meeting note from May 10th. I'm going to drag this note page just under the meeting notes. Uh, page. I'll right click it and make it a sub page. I'll create two other pages underneath. And let's say this is a meeting note from May 11th and May 12th. They're now all nested under the meeting notes uh, group so that they're organized together. If I have a lot of pages, I can even collapse this by hitting this arrow here. And I can even create a subpage to a subpage if you want. Copy link to a page works exactly the same as copy link to sections that we reviewed earlier. Set as default template. Although OneNote for Windows 10 doesn't have the full-blown template options as in the desktop version, it does allow you to save an existing page that you create as a template for that section. Um, let me explain. So let's suppose we have a quick um, template for collecting agendas. Let's say we want this page to serve as a template. I'm going to right mouse click, click set as default template. Now all new pages that I create in this section will have this template applied. Pin pages to start works exactly the same as pin section to start, so we'll skip over. If you recall, if you pin it, you can 
find the pin pages within the tile, probably at the bottom of the list here. Mark as unread. When working in a shared notebook and someone else adds new content, the titles of the note pages and sections become bold and the content on the page becomes highlighted. This makes it easy for you to see the changes. You can toggle from read to unread depending on whether you've reviewed the changes or if you plan to review later. OneNote keeps track of changes made to a note page. You can go back to a previous version and restore it if you need. Uh, let me give you an example. I'm going to go to a different notebook. Okay, here. If I go to page versions, you can see that there are two versions. One that was worked on back in April 6th and another one, more current one, that was worked on on May 10th. If I wanted to restore the older version, I can view it. You see that the page looks different and click on make current page. You can also translate a page. The first time you run this feature, you'll have to agree to the privacy terms. After that, you can choose either a specific selection or the entire page to translate. And of course, you'd have to choose the appropriate language. Lastly, you can choose to add a new page below, which is really the same as hitting this button here. And of course, we can sort the pages either by alphabetical, date created or date modified in both ascending or descending order. So that was an overview of the OneNote organization structure. Now let me show you how I set up and organize my own notebook. For context, I use OneNote only for work. For personal notes, I actually use Evernote. If I were using OneNote for both work and home, I'd probably keep a separate notebook for each. But since I don't, all my work notes are saved in one single notebook. Since I'm able to organize my notes using sections and section groups, I don't feel the need to have multiple notebooks. In fact, I think this could be counterproductive as this adds a layer of complexity for when I need to save or retrieve notes. But having a single notebook for all my notes means that my notebook will grow much faster. So I make it a point to create a new notebook at the start of the year and archive the old notebook to be used for reference only. And I have a video about this, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. The only other time that I may consider creating an additional notebook is if I'm working on a large enterprise level project and I plan to share the notebook with my colleagues. So this is an example of how my notebooks are typically organized. I have a section group for my active projects. and section group for my recurring meetings. I can easily see all of the projects that I'm working on just by looking at the section titles. So if your boss stops by and asks what you're working on, you'll have the response at your fingertips. Similarly, I can see all of the meetings that I regularly participate in at a simple glance and know how I'm spending my time. I also have a section group for archives. Sections for completed projects um, and sections for meetings that are no longer active will be moved here. So for example, let's say project A has completed and I don't need to keep it in my active project. I'm going to move it to archives. And that way, next time I look at this section group, I know that I'm only working on project B, C, and D. But if I do want to reference materials from project A, I can always go to the archive. I also have a quick notes section that I use as a holding area for new notes. Let me explain. One of the challenges that I often encounter is that as I bounce from meetings to meetings, I'm not always prepared to create the note page in the correct section. This is especially true for the one-off random meetings where I can't decide on the fly which section to place my notes in. 
In these cases, I'll create the note page in the quick notes section. Then at the end of the day, I can take all these random notes and file them in their appropriate places and even create a new section if I need. This also forces me to review the notes again, which is really helpful. To launch Quick Notes, I use the shortcut Windows Alt N. But for me, this opens my note in the desktop version, not the Windows 10 version of OneNote. I actually do have both installed on my computer. So for those of you who only have the Windows 10 version installed, I'm not sure if this shortcut will work, but please try it and let me know in the comments below. Either way, you can just keep the quick note section as the first section on top, as I do have here, uh, so that it's easy to access. And as mentioned earlier, you can always pin this section to start so that you could easily access. For recurring meetings, I often set up the pages in advance and build out the agenda as I collect information in various meetings and project status updates. So if a project team member requests 15 minutes to discuss the budget in two weeks, I will just add it to the agenda for that day. And if I know that there's a deadline or a key milestone coming up, I will add it to the agenda a week before the due dates. This helps me plan and be prepared to drive the right discussions at the right time. For recurring meetings and project-based notes, I do try to simplify the page titles and keep them consistent. I prefer to just have one page for the meeting or project then nest note pages under them using simplified names and dates, as you see here. This way, it's very easy to find and review notes from the previous meetings. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you're interested in other OneNote tips, be sure to check out this video next. Thanks. Mm -hmm.